Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Eli and welcome back to my channel for another video. In today's video, I have five tips for you guys on how to better use compression in your mixes. Compressors is one of the tools that we just cannot avoid to use when mixing. And unfortunately, it can actually take years to fully understand how to use compressors. So that's why today I decided to put a list of five things that you need to consider when mixing and using compressors. Before we jump into this video, make sure to drop a like and comment down below to show your support to this channel. And if you're new, don't forget to hit on the subscribe button and turn on the notification for more videos like this. And if you own a home studio and you are a home recording and mixing engineer, this channel is for you. We're gonna bring you tips and tricks on how to get the best sound out of your home studio. So make sure to hit on the subscribe button and turn on the notification to not miss any future uploads. Without any further ado, let's jump into this video and talk about those five things that you need to consider. The first thing that you need to consider is that compressors are not always the solution. A lot of times we may find it easier to just slap a compressor on a track and call it a day, when in fact, a simple volume automation could have been better. We need to analyze our track and determine whether or not a compressor is actually the right tool to use in this case. I'm not saying compressors are bad and to stay away from them. Sometimes adding a compressor to a track might actually destroy it versus actually helping. So we need to explore other venues and see if a compressor is actually the best option in this case. And if it's not, then don't use a compressor. The second thing you need to consider when mixing using compressors is that compressors are not trim tools. If you don't know what a trim tool is, it is simply a tool we use to gain stage. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about trim tools, just know that compressors should not be used as trim tools. It's actually sad that there is a lot of videos out there actually preaching this exact technique. One thing to keep in mind is that not everybody in the home recording world has the same environment to record in. So while that technique might work for somebody, it may not work for you. So use a compressor the way it was intended to use and not as a trim tool. The third thing I have for you guys is to actually know your end goal before you even consider using a compressor. And that also ties back to our first point about compressors not always being the solution. It's very simple. If you don't know why you need to use a compressor on a track, then you probably don't need it. You do not need every tool in your arsenal to get the job done. And that is exactly what a compressor is. It's just another tool in your arsenal. So if you do not have a need for it, then don't use it. All right, the fourth tip I have for you guys is to learn the perimeters of your compressor. There are many different types of compressors out there and they essentially do the same thing in their own different ways. So in order for you to better use a compressor on the track, you need to know what type of compressor it is and how it affects your track. With the variety of compressors out there, some have more knobs than others do. And there are three knobs in most compressors that is basically gonna handle the entire job. The first is the threshold. It tells your compressor when to start compressing. The next, is your ratio. It tells your compressor how much to compress by. And lastly, it's your makeup gain. When you compress, you lose volume, so you need to gain that back. So we use a makeup gain to gain that back. Other perimeters and compressors you need to familiarize yourself with is attack and release. Attack tells your compressor how fast to attack and the release tells your compressor how long to hold for. And lastly, there's a knee, probably the most rare knob you'll find on the compressor, but if it does have it, it essentially tells your compressor how hard or soft to attack. And last but not least, compressors are used to control our audio, not to change it. Now there are always we may use a compressor to add characteristic to a sound, more about that later, but at its core, the sound should remain more or less the same at the end of the chain. When not used properly, compressors can actually change the way our audio sounds. And if that's the case, you are not using it right. Unless, of course, it's a conscious creative decision. I can go for days talking about how to properly use a compressor, but I figured I would just leave it here and leave you guys with one last tip. As I said before, you can actually use a compressor to add certain characteristics to your sound. And I'm sure you guys have heard this from your favorite producer or engineer, how certain compressors add warmth or body to a certain type of track. The easiest thing to do would be to just use that compressor in your chain for that specific track. But if you have already determined that this track doesn't need to be compressed, you can still use it. You just need to make sure that this track is actually not being compressed by that compressor. It's essentially just being run through it to get that warmth or that body that you feel like this compressor may add to this track. As you get more experience in mixing, you're gonna find yourself gravitate towards a certain type of compressor or a certain type of track, and that is perfectly normal. 
But at the end of the day, all compressors do the same thing. They just do it in their own different way. You need to familiarize yourself with the type of compressors that you're using and how it actually affects your track. And that is actually all I have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and comment down below to show your support to this channel. And if you're new, don't forget to hit on the subscribe button and turn on the notification for more videos like this. I'll see you next time in the next video.